Good evening, wrestling fans. I'm your host, Lewis, and this is Evolution of Pro Wrestling. As you notice, my colleague and co-host isn't here today. Um, he's actually in a little hiatus for a couple of weeks, but he will be back with us shortly. Thank you for joining us again, fans. We're, a lot has happened in pro wrestling for the past couple of weeks, past week itself in general, and we got a lot to talk about. First off, uh, All Out, AEW has completely sold out yesterday in a matter of 15 minutes. That's impressive for an organization that just came into the mix. And for that, that pay-per-view alone, the two main matches for that, which a lot of people are dying to see, John Moxley and Kenny Omega. Holy shit. A lot of people are looking to see this match. A lot of people are going for it. I won't be surprised of what's going to happen when that when those two collide at All Out. You're also going to have, for the first time ever, to determine the AEW Heavyweight Champion, Chris Jericho, against Hangman Page for the AEW Heavyweight Championship. A new champion is going to be crowned. Fans, you are not going to want to miss that pay-per-view. I know more matches are going to be assigned there, and it's just going to be a matter of time before they move up in the ranks. Now, when I mention about AEW... Selling on in 15 minutes. WWE is having trouble selling tickets for Stomping Ground, which we're going to get into in Stomping Ground later on in the show. WWE, there's a lot of things not going right. There's things you need to do. I heard pretty much online, Vince McMahon is pretty much furious with the ratings and the fans. You know, the fans are not appreciating the show. Can you blame them? You know, everything that's going on, you know... You have all these ridiculous things happening. A boombox with Brock Lesnar. You got these six-man tag team matches and all that stuff. Come on. Let's get real. You said you want to bring back the Attitude Era. Then you need to step it up, take initiative like you used to do Vince McMahon and do it. Don't wait for it. You're worried about being that company man and you understand the sponsorships and all that stuff. But you're losing money here. You're losing money. You need to do what you got to do. The, I think the most entertaining thing, entertaining thing right now going on in WWE is the 24-7 championship, which R-Truth won back from Drake Maverick after Drake Maverick beat him at an airport or backstage, and R-Truth beat him at his wedding, which surprisingly was crazy. So R-Truth, six-time 24-7 champion. Much respect to you, bro, but... You're going you're gonna to continue going through that and people are going to come after you. There's a lot of stuff that people don't know about beyond the wrestling world of WWE and AEW. This past weekend, on fr this past week of Friday, June 14th, we saw the final match of Adam Rose against Bull Dempsey. It was a hell of a match. And it was an honor to be there to see that match in Atomic Revolutionary Wrestling. Omar Rockshaw, what's up? Thank you for tuning in. And seeing that match, it was it was phenomenal. And Adam Rose, much respect to you as well as Bull Dempsey. Um, there's been a lot of stuff going on with New Japan Pro Wrestling. New Japan has been really criticizing the WWE of Monday Night Raw and their superstars because apparently superstars are complaining a lot. They're complaining about their statuses in WWE. You guys at least forget. WWE made you what you are today. And you guys don't even take it for, don't even take it into consideration. You guys complain. You guys make money. You make mo most money in WWE, and you guys don't care. Look at the the realization here. You guys became stars, superstars. That's the key word there. Superstars in WWE, but all you guys do is complain. Going to AEW, you think that's gonna make a difference? You're gonna have the same money, the same type of publicity in TV. Superstar. Go with it. The Firefly segment this past Monday, awesome segment, but I think there was a direct shot from Vince McMahon to John Moxley when uh, Rambling Rabbit got smashed with a sledgehammer, and pretty much there was some words said that I'm not going to say it on the air, but it, I think it was a direct shot towards John Moxley and other WWE superstars looking to leave or that have left the WWE because they were frustrated with the organization. Vince McMahon also um, 
is having some problems with Fox and Saudi Arabia. Apparently, Saudi Arabia wants to air WWE on Fridays, knowing the fact that SmackDown is coming to Fox on Fridays. And there's one in particular in November that they both have the same show on Friday. So that's going to be a bit difficult for talent to juggle during that time. Excuse me. So it's going to be kind of interesting to find out how that's going to go. Now, fans, we're going to take you to stomping ground. I'm going to give you my predictions. If you guys have any predictions, you can say it on the air. This is how we're going to go. Also, before I get to stomping ground, I'm sorry. Law, uh, breaking news, Lars Sullivan has been injured. He has a knee injury. He's going to be out six to nine months. Possibly have surgery. I don't know what type of injury. How ser- Apparently, the injury was serious because he's out six to nine months. It must have been a serious injury, and I think it was against the Lucha Party. So... Who knows how long is it going to be? It could be more. Um, but other than that, it's it's stuff you got to look for when it comes to WWE. It's time to take that next step, Vince. So let's talk about Stomping Ground. Stomping Ground has an excellent card. Got some good matches. I, I wouldn't mind seeing them. Let's see how it's going to go. First match. Roman Reigns against Drew McIntyre. I would have to pick for this one, because Roman Reigns has been getting the edge on Drew McIntyre, but I think Drew McIntyre is going to try to get the upper hand, but quite frankly, I don't think I'm going to pick a winner for this one. I know my wife, who is watching us now, I know she's going to go for Roman Reigns, but it's pretty difficult to pick a winner for this one, so I'm actually going to stay neutral with this one. You have the Cruiserweight uh, Championship match. <clears throat> Tony Nies, Akira Tozawa, and Drew Gulek. Three of the top stars in the, in the division of Cruiserweights. Me, personally, I think I will have to give my, my pick to Tony Nese, the champion. I think he's going to win that match and retain the, uh, the Cruiserweight Championship. You have two of the New Day, Xavier Woods and Big E, going up against Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. I think I'm going to have to give this one to Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens. Those two, uh, they've been on, on an aggressive, aggressive streak as of late. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I think they're gonna take the match. You also have for the tag team championship, Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan against the Heavy Machinery. Heavy Machinery is an up and coming team from NXT. You know the guys they they're pretty strong, they're athletic in some sh- way, shape, or form. But with the experience of Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan, I I don't think Machinery is gonna win this. So I I have to give my pick to Daniel Bryan and Rowan. You also have Bailey against Alexa Bliss for the Women's SmackDown Championship. Alexa Bliss has been wanting to get back into the title picture for a long time. This rivalry is getting heated. But I have to say, still, I give it to Bailey. I think Bailey's going to retain this title and keep her title and continue on her quest as the, uh, the Women's Champion of SmackDown. Now we have... Seth Rollins against Baron Corbin for the Universal title. Baron Corbin hasn't picked a a special referee yet. I think it's going to be a disadvantage to Seth Rollins, but I still think Seth Rollins is still going to come out the Universal champion. Then you have the United States Championship, which I think they finally, WWE, they finally something right. Samoa Joe against Ricochet. I say Ricochet is going to take it. Ricochet deserves it. Forget all the bad publicity that they're talking about this leaked video. I'm not even going to get into that. Let's talk about wrestling. The man is a phenomenal athlete. He deserves a shot at the title. He deserves what he needs to, what's coming for him. He's worked his ass off in NXT and he deserves to be in the main roster. And the man is phenomenal in the ring. So I think he's going to take that U.S. title. WWE would be stupid not to give him that U.S. title. Then you have the main event. Kofi Kingston against Dolph Ziggler. Two phenomenal athletes. Kofi Kingston, heavyweight champion. Dolph Ziggler returning, having a major feud with Kofi Kingston. I still have to give my pick to Kofi on this one because he's been a fighting champion ever since he's won the title. But you never know in WWE. Anything can happen. Now, fans, we're going to bring you to our topic today. Superstars that have made, have become famous from WCW to WWE or WWE to WCW as well as 
superstars that have been rejected by either brand. Now, when you look at these superstars, these superstars transcend into a new era when they go to certain companies. And sometimes it works out for them, sometimes it doesn't. And there's some we're going to name, there's some that you guys might agree with and you might not. And you can always comment on it. One in particular that I first saw that made an impact from WCW to WWE was Chris Jericho, Y2J, before he went to AEW. Chris Jericho went from a cruiserweight in WCW, wasn't doing nothing, wasn't, he wasn't even a star. He was having battles with Dean Malenko. You know, Dean Malenko is he's a phenomenal athlete. Dean Malenko and other stars, luchadors, okay. But not the hype that he lived when he came to WWE. The moment he came to the WWE with the countdown and interrupting The Rock with the countdown, he was a star right, right off the back. Best entrance ever, best debut I've ever seen since I've been watching WWE. The man is a multi-world heavyweight champion, tag team champion, intercontinental champion, United States champion. Like, the man is phenomenal. He's won over 20 titles since he's been in WWE. You got to give the man his due. But this is coming from when he came from WCW. WCW never made him a star. He was a star when he got to WWE. The same thing with Eddie Guerrero. Eddie Guerrero was also a cruiserweight, but Eddie Guerrero was a phenomenal athlete in ECW at the time. And he went from ECW to WCW. He thought he was going to have stardom. Fought for the cruiserweight title. Won the United States title at a point. <clears throat> Excuse me. But that's so he, he pretty much didn't go any farther. That Apparently, Eric Bischoff didn't see that potential in him. And we'll get to that in a minute of, so, of another wrestler that Eric Bischoff pretty much didn't have any confidence in that one wrestler. Eddie Guerrero went from WCW. He came with Chris Benoit, Perry Saturn, and Dean Malenko. The Radicals. They came in. They made a name for themselves. Eddie Guerrero ended up coming, becoming the, the tag team champion, and a continental champion, and a WWE champion that nobody thought he was going to beat Brock Lesnar. And he beat him. And he was the, the, a fighting champion. And he was a major star. God rest his soul. And this is what happened when he got rejected by WCW because of his talent. Supposedly his talent wasn't all that. He came, <clears throat> excuse me, but he was successful. Now, when I mentioned about Eric Bischoff um, not wanting a certain character to make it, he had that same negativity towards Stone Cold Steve Austin. Stone Cold Steve Austin was part of the Hollywood Blondes at a point. He was the longest TV champion in uh, WCW history alongside Arn Anderson when Arn Anderson was TV champion. He won the tag team championship with the Hollywood Bonds with Brian Pillman, God rest his soul. Then a U.S. champion, but then he lost it in a matter of seconds to Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Eric Bischoff didn't see any potential in him. <clears throat> Got rid of him. Came to WWE as the ringmaster, didn't really work out for him. Made himself this character of this stone cold character. And he just went all out from there. He became the rattlesnake, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Won numerous titles, world heavyweight champion, the leader of the Attitude Era, <clears throat> and just took over. He led the WWE. He saved the WWE in the Attitude Era. Much respect to him for that. And he deserves every minute of his fame and the Hall of Fame as well. There's another gentleman by the name of Paul White who was known as the Big Show. Big Show had some stardom in WCW. Don't get me wrong. He, he won the World Heavyweight title. You know, won uh, some tag team titles. But I think he made it bigger in WWE. At first, WWE rejected him because they, wanted, they didn't want another Andre the Giant. You know, so-called Andre the Giant. But as time went on, you know, WCW started falling apart. Big Show gave WWE a call. They said, okay, we got, uh, we got a spot for you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Come to uh, St. Valentine's Day Massacre and beat the living bejesus out of Stone Cold. Made his debut. It went, it went great after that. He became part of the corporation. He started making a name for himself. Became a WWE champion. Uh, ECW heavyweight champion. United States champion. Um, won a uh, Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. So the man is a future Hall of Famer in my book. I think he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. 
Um, but he he really did he did his thing when he came to WWE. Um, there's many superstars that you don't know that were in WCW before that got rejected by them due to their talent that didn't want anything to do with them. Now, when I mean rejecting, I'm not saying, oh, you're not going to be in the organization. No, yeah, sometimes it's like that, sometimes it's not. There were two superstars that were in WCW that many people don't know. Triple H and Edge, these two were in WCW at a point, and none of them got into superstardom. None of them. They came to WWE. First, Triple H came as the Blue Blood, Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Edge came as The Edge. You know, until they took the uh, out and just made him edge. And they started climbing up in the rankings. You know, Triple H, unfortunately, he got the bad part of the uh, curtain call, as we say, when um, Shawn Michaels, Kevin Nash, and Scott Hall did a curtain call. And since Shawn Michaels at the point at a point was untouchable, Kevin Nash and Scott Hall were out the door, Triple H paid for it. But eventually, he started coming up more, and he went from Hunter Hearst Helmsley to Triple H to the game and the Cerebral Assassin. The man is possibly, I think, I believe, a 14-time champion. The man is Hall of Fame. He, he is a Hall of Fame. He's in the Hall of Fame. He's in part of the X. The man is phenomenal in the ring. He's a general in the ring. And that was due to the passion he had and the chance he got from the WWE. <clears throat> Same thing with Edge. Edge is a Hall of Famer. Edge is, uh, is the, the ult ultimate opportunist. He took it. He ran with it. Unfortunately, he had to retire due to injury. But he provided the fans what they wanted when WCW rejected him and his talent. And he came to WWE. <clears throat> I'm sorry, fans. Excuse me. One person I have to say that actually got famous from WCW instead of WWE. He did. He was famous at a point in WWE until the 90s. Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan was, you know, the saying the prayers, take your vitamins, training, all that stuff. You know, the, the, the hand and breaking the shirt. It was famous in the 80s. The moment it got to the 90s is when ah, fans didn't want to see no more. The breaking the shirt, none of that stuff. The saying your prayers, but you know, blah, blah, blah. He went to WCW. He was still famous eh, a little bit, but then they finally, they, they, they stirred the pot a little bit. That's when they said, you know what? Why don't you make me a bad guy? That was the best thing they could have did in WCW. Hulk Hogan becoming a heel. Hulk Hogan creating the NWO. His career skyrocketed from there. He was the most hated heel in WCW. And he made a lot of money for WCW. Like the, they were kicking the shit out of WWE for 83 straight weeks, which is two years, you know. <clears throat> and it was tough for WWE to rebound. And that's what made the WWE Attitude Era. But I think Hulk Hogan became more famous when he was in WCW. And he made, he made, he brought out that talent from everybody else like a Goldberg, Kevin Nash, uh, Scott Hall, Booker T, all these guys that are in the Hall of Famers now. And I think it was because of Hulk Hogan. So I, I, I think I have to give this one to WCW. And I mentioned Kevin Nash and Scott Holt. They went to WCW as well. They made their, their career better in WCW when they were in WWE. Yes, Scott Holt was the Intercontinental Champion at the time, but that was it. Kevin Nash was WWE Champion at a point, but wasn't really getting that type of publicity, that type of fan base. And then he became a heel. Wasn't like in the direction the way WWE was taking him. WCW offered him money. He went to WCW. He did much better in the Outsiders. He made more of an impact in WCW, especially with the ratings. He helped with the ratings as well. So those two actually were, I wouldn't say rejected because they wanted to sign with the WWE, but WWE didn't want to sign them because they couldn't afford it. And then that's when they went to WCW because at first when they were in WCW, WCW did not respect their, their talent. You know, they were the Diamond Stud and the Grand, uh, the Wizard or some, you know, all these type of gimmicks that they had that really wasn't working, you know. And they eventually did something better actually using their real names. The Outsiders, they invaded WCW. At first they thought it was WWE and they, they took it and ran with it, which was amazing. And I, and I miss those days of, of the Monday Night Wars. 
Um, I mentioned Chris Benoit in the show, and I know a lot of people don't like to mention him because of what happened in his history, but this is wrestling. We're not talking about his personal life. In wrestling, he made a, he made a mark. He made an impact. He did. He was the best. He was one of the best. Won the World Heavyweight title twice. Was the first participated in the first ever triple threat match at WrestleMania. He did a hell of a job. He was a, he was a good ring talent, and unfortunately, his demons got a hold of him, and it just went downhill from there. But he also came from WCW, and in WCW, he wasn't doing nothing. They didn't like his talent. They didn't like his character. You know, he was better in New Japan pro wrestling and, 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 you know, doing all that stuff. So it was pretty phenomenal seeing him in WWE. Um, one person in particular that really made a splash in WWE that WCW didn't see him as a star, which was surprisingly crazy, was Mick Foley. Mick Foley was Cactus Jack. He was in Cactus Jack. And he pretty much wasn't going anywhere. Like Eric Bischoff didn't like his talent. You know, yeah, he liked him personally. But professionally, he didn't like his, his work. He didn't like what's, what was going on. Ole Anderson at the time was the president. He didn't like his talent. He didn't like anything he was doing. Next thing you know, he came to WWE. He debuted as Mankind. Excellent segment with the rat, by the way. And he just went with it. He had feuds with Vader and... Shawn Michaels, the Undertaker was his most fierce uh, rivalry in WWE when he went through the King of the Ring Hell in a Cell match. When he got thrown through the cage and everybody was like, holy shit, this man, is he's dead. And I was like, wow, that was one of the most phenomenal matches I've ever seen. So imagine seeing that in person that all the fans were like, oh, wow. And he really made it in WWE. Became a three-time heavyweight champion. Became... Phenomenal in the hardcore division and became a Hall of Famer. So imagine when you let that character loose, that's what WWE did. He had Do Love, Mick Foley, Catfish Jack. He had a ball and he deserves every single right to be called a Hall of Famer. Um, one technical wrestler I actually enjoyed watching at a point was it was pretty much William Regal, Bobby Martin up. How you doing, sir? Thank you for watching. Um, William Regal was a great technical wrestler. He won the television title at a point in WCW. Didn't really live, relive the stardom in WCW. I think when he got to WWE is when he got better. He won the King of the Ring. He won a few titles. Very technical. Now he's a trainer in the Performance Center, which is phenomenal because he's an excellent trainer. He's an excellent wrestler. He's good... As a professional, he's uh, very technical. He can teach you the, in, the ins and outs of the ring. And he, I think I can actually see him being in the Hall of Fame. I know people, some people won't agree with it, but I think I would. And I hope to see him sometime in, in, in the Hall of Fame. Uh, one person in particular, Goldberg. Goldberg grew to stardom in WCW. But when he came to WWE, he was automatically rejected by the fans. You know, WWE superstars didn't really take a liking to him. Because he he saw these guys that were already f more famous than him. You know, like The Rock, Stone Cold, Steve Austin, Triple H, you know, others, Edge, all these people. And he tried to relive the hype that he did in WCW. That wasn't going to happen. Because these guys were on top already. You know, and that's what happened. That's why he, he was pretty much rejected by WWE. And didn't stay there much, and he just left. He left after WrestleMania 20. Never came back until maybe like 12, 13 years later, maybe more. So it really didn't work out for him in WWE. And look at what happened at uh, Super Show. You know, the man knocked himself out. It's time to retire, bro. I'm sorry. You were, you were a great athlete. You're a Hall of Famer. But I think it's time to hang it up. That's what needs to be done. Um, Vampiro, which is a, a rare name that I'm mentioning in the show, he almost became a star in WWE, in WCW. Never came to WWE because WWE pretty much rejected him. They didn't want him. They made it clear they did not want Vampiro 
in the transition of WCW going into the WWE when WWE bought WCW. The man was pretty good athlete. He had a few with Sting at a point, you know, the bloodbath and all that stuff, but <clears throat> excuse me, didn't really live that hype as people wanted people wanted him to see. And unfortunately, it didn't work out for him. <coughs> excuse me. It didn't work out for him. And Unfortunately, he didn't make it in the wrestling industry. Um, I wish he could have. I wish they could have built this character a little bit more, but they didn't. And it was just a shame. His career was just pissed away. Um, one person in particular that I love to see that he was just crazy in WCW. Um, made stardom in WWE too, but I think he just as much did good with the NWO too, better, was the Macho Man. God rest his soul. He did a phenomenal job as a heel in WCW in the NWO. He returned a few times, you know, not re returning back didn't really work out for him. But when he came to WCW the first time, he joined Hulk Hogan. They had the, the, the Mega Maniacs and Mega Powers and all that stuff. And the same thing in WWE, they had the Mega Powers. But he was an excellent heel. He was phenomenal in WWE. He called himself the Lord and Master of the Ring. The man deserves a title. Hall of Famer. The man did excellent. But he, at a point, he tried to come back to WWE and he was just rejected by WWE because he said they said, no, you left us. You left us for money. We made you. And this is what happened. And he never came back. And I think that's what took them so long to in induct him in the Hall of Fame because the family won no part of it. But he deserves it. And I'm glad he is. Um, when we mentioned about when Hulk Hogan was making stars, one of those stars was Booker T that I mentioned. Booker T was, <clears throat> um, a wrestler in WCW that didn't live that hype until WCW's doors were closing and he won the heavyweight championship. He won the TV title. He won the U.S. title. He won stuff like that. Uh, tag team, excellent tag team. Him and Harlem Heat with Stevie Ray. Two, two, one of the best tag teams of all time, in my in my opinion. Came to WWE, five-time, five-time, five-time champion. The Spinner Rooney, the man was a, a phenomenal athlete in WWE, well-liked in WWE. He was accepted. At first, he was rejected because they didn't want anything to do with him at his younger time. Once he came to red hot from this transition of WCW invading WWE, that's when everything hit the fan. He fought Stone Cold. He fought The Undertaker. He fought Triple H. Many stars in WWE. Eddie Guerrero. He was phenomenal. King Booker. The man won the King of the Ring. That character of King Booker was phenomenal. No one could have played it better than him. So it was, it was one to, to enjoy. Um, one in particular that also made a name for himself in WCW. Not WWE. Arn Anderson, the enforcer, he was in WWE for a short period of time as the Brain Busters. He was with Tully Blanchard. He made stardom in WCW as part of the Four Horsemen. With him, Ric Flair, um, Barry Windham, and Ole Anderson. Phenomenal. Lex Luger was part of that too, but he was the main one in the organization of the Four Horsemen. The man had the best spine buster I've ever seen in the business. <clears throat> he would take you out completely with that spine buster. Unfortunately, a freak accident in the shoulder, a bad surgery, ended his career early. The man was at the prime of his career. He still had things to do, but he's a he is a Hall of Famer. He's with the Four Horsemen, and he's it's well deserved. Um, unfortunately, he was rejected by WWE. WWE WWE did not like his. His persona, they didn't like his attitude, the tag team division, it wasn't working for him. So that's when he came back to WCW and made a name for himself. And I wish he still would have been wrestling before. And I still could watch his matches to this day. And he's well deserved. Um, I would say one person that's really being rejected by WWE right now, which I think they're using him terribly, terribly. I don't know why. The man was a phenomenal athlete in TNA. He was a phenomenal athlete in NXT. EC3. WWE, what the hell are you doing? The man is a phenomenal athlete. You're using him as, I don't understand, like, 
he's he's coming out and pointing at his letters. The man is acting like he doesn't want to be there in WWE because of the way you guys are using him. He's being attacked by Seth Rollins with a steel chair. Got got, got the shit beat out of him. Like, what the hell are you guys doing? Make the man a star. Give him a push. That's what needs to be. The, that's why you guys are losing the ratings you are. That's why you're losing the fans that you're doing because of the bullshit that you're doing now. Stop. Like, make this man a star. He was phenomenal in NXT. You guys bring him. That's what you guys do to everybody that comes up from NXT. One of those wrestlers that I didn't put on my list, but I'm going to mention him here, Shinsuke Nakamura. You guys rejected him. You brought him up. You had you gave him a small push. Then what happened? You put him with Rusev in a tag team match. You put him doing this dumb nonsense all over the place, going after the 24-7 title. Come on. The man was a phenomenon in Japan, in NXT, all over the world. And you guys just piss his career down the drain. Wake up. I wish I could see Shinsuke win the title. Yes, okay, he won the United States title. Big deal. You, you guys should have gave him that title at WrestleMania when he fought AJ Styles. But instead, you made him turn a heel. His career was downhill from there. Why? You guys rejected him. The fans rejected him. They didn't want to even want to see him as a heel. And it was dumb. And it was stupid. Excuse me. And that's, what happened. that's what's happening with EC3. His career is just going down the drain. And sooner or later, he's going to be the next one out the door. And that's another thing. There's a lot of guys talking about they're leaving the company because of this nonsense. That are being rejected by the fans and, you know, everything that's going on. Guys got to wake up. One person in particular that was rejected by WCW, um, they didn't really like him. But I thought he was phenomenal. God rest his soul, Owen Hart. Owen Hart had a chance for stardom in WWE. And what happened? Again, WWE dropped the ball. They made him the Blue Blazer. Why? That's the reason, God, God forgive me, but that's why the man is dead now. Because the man flew 75 feet off the air and was killed. Why are you put in with the blue baser? You should have kept him as the king of hearts, the black heart, give him that push. But you guys never did. That was also dumb. Come on. You got, I, I don't understand what's going on with the WWE now. Like, I used to be a huge WWE fan. And they're just rejecting all the ideas. They're rejecting everything. One person in particular that I knew made it in WWE, but he was rejected in WCW by the fans and the company. The Undertaker. The Undertaker became a phenomenal athlete that went beyond... Anything I've ever seen in this business. The man had a winning streak of 21 wins. 21 years undefeated at WrestleMania. Former heavyweight champion. Former WWE champion. Former WCW tag team champion. WWE tag team champion. Royal Rumble winner. The man is Hall of Fame caliber. These are the characters that WWE needs to bring back if you're going to succeed in this war with AEW. A lot of people say, no, AEW uh, is just starting, that, they're, you know, they, that a lot of people are going to reject them because they're still WWE fans. No. We're selling out in 15 minutes. That's a statement that AEW is a force to be reckoned with. And WWE... Better take notice. If not, you guys are going to lose your talent and you're going to lose just like you did with WCW. Fans, as always, it has been a pleasure for many of you watching. We appreciate your support. Please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Evolution of Pro Wrestling. If you have any comments, questions, or any topics for us, Please email us at evolutionofprowrestling at gmail.com. Next week's topic is going to be the best of the wrestling families. And you know there's a lot of families out there of many generations of, w, of superstars and wrestling families in WCW, NWA, WWE, all that stuff. So 
As always, it's been a pleasure having you guys here. For myself, Lewis, one of the co-hosts, and my lovely wife, producer and director, Yesenia De Leon. Thank you, fans, for watching, and tune in next week, as always, on our show. Have a good night.